In this presentation, we're going to talk about sample preparation for geochemistry and mining samples. Sample preparation is the most important step that is required for any analysis. It is especially critical, critical for geochemical and metallurgical samples due to their complex nature where the sample preparation can influence the results and accuracy. Good results begin with good sample preparation. In this presentation, I'm going to give a general introduction of geochemical and mining ele elemental analysis applications, an overview of analytical processes and challenges in geological sample preparation, and then commonly used sample preparation techniques. And we'll finish with a few application examples. So let's start with an overview of geological samples applications and analytical requirements. Sample types can be very complex and diverse, and can, go, and can be anything from rocks and ores to metallurgy and coal. For these sample types, you're going to want to do different analysis. You may want to look for their composition, their concentration of rare earth elements, precious metals, their impurities, or an isotope ratio. You have to also consider whether the sample type that you are running will be for high throughput samples, repeatability, or you're looking for long-term stability. Elemental analysis of geochemical samples are typically run by either atomic absorption spectroscopy, inductively coupled optical emission spectroscopy, or inductively coupled mass spectroscopy. The atomic absorption spectroscopy, or AA, come in two variations. A flame, which typically has a detect detection limits of the low ppm range, or a graphite furnish, which has detection limits in the low ppb range. The Pinnacle series AA comes with a variety of config configurations depending on the number of elements that you were required to analyse and if you require a flame, a graphite or both. The Perkinelma Avio series ICP OES offers dual plasma view for effective me measurement or of major and minor elements in the same method from PPB to PPM ranges. The patented flat plate plasma technology allows for lower gas consumption and either a simultaneous or fast sequential unit is available. The Nexian series ICPMS offers a unique level of sensitivity down to the PPT levels as well as an extended dynamic range of 11 orders of magnitude. The ICPMS also offers a universal cell for interference removal. The analytical process follows five main steps. Sampling, which in this case is mining, something like ore, rock or coal. This is followed by sample preparation, which involves crushing the samples, making them homogeneous and digesting the samples to get them into liquid form for analysis. This is followed by the measurement stage in which you decide what instrument you run on and what elements you analyze for. After this, you can evaluate your data and then report your findings. The sample preparation step is vital to get right as the correct digestion technique is needed to be used to ensure that the elements of interest are completely digested or that interferences or high, or high baseline is not added, which will make the analysis more difficult. It is very challenging to digest geochemical samples because the sample composition is diverse. Most samples are not homogeneous and require a lot of chemicals for digestion. In addition, a wide range of elements of interest makes the digestion more difficult and high purity acids for some applications may be required. A wide variety of digestion methods have been developed to deal with geochemical samples. Here we list the most common preparation methods. These include acid digestion, alkali, alkali fusion digestion and fire assay digestion. Acid digestion includes both open and closed vessel digestion. In the next slides, I will detail some of the acids and acid mixtures used in the digestion process. Alkali fusion methods are particularly good for digesting samples containing aluminium and silicon. While precious metal samples are generally prepared using fire assay methods for sample preparation, either using a lead or nickel fire assay. It is a pre-concentration method and the precious metals are separated from the matrix. The table on this slide lists the properties of the acids most commonly used in sample preparation. 
Nitric acid is an oxidizing acid and has the ability to dissolve most elements. Hydrochloric acid is the most commonly used non-oxidizing acid and is used to dissolve most metals, alloys and many minerals by forming stable chloride complexes. Hydrofluoric acid is also a non-oxidizing acid and complexes in the same way as hydrochloric acid. Its most important characteristic is for dissolving silica-based substances like glass or minerals. Plachloric acid is a powerful oxidizing acid when heated for the use in, of digestion for organic samples. However, it presents a serious explosion hazard. Samples are generally digested by a mixture of acids such as aqua regia, four acid digests, or a mixture of others, and it will depend on the sample types and the elements of interest. Acid digestion is the most commonly used method. It uses a combination of different mineral acids, heat, and in the case of closed vessels, pressures. Samples are homogenized and weighed. A combination of acids are then added before they are digested using a hot plate or hot block or microwave. In open vessel digestion, it is rare to get a total digestion. This is improved with the microwave digestion, but again, it's not always 100%, so techniques will yield partial to near total digestions. Therefore, some samples will need to be filtered and diluted before they can be analysed. Each sample digestion method has some advantages and disadvantages. Let's have a look at each method in detail. The open acid digestion is a traditional method. It's simple, inexpensive, and generally used in the re regulatory and compliance laboratories. However, only limited samples can be totally digested using this method. The refractory elements are difficult to be digested using this method. In addition, due to the evaporation of volatile elements during the sample preparation, it is not suitable for the quantitative analysis of elements such as boron, arsenic and antimony. Closed vessel digestion or microwave digestion is an advanced digestion method and is used to digest more difficult sample types. This method is considered faster, cleaner and more reproducible than the open vessel digestion methods. The main advantage of microwave-assisted digestion is minimising the work time and evaporation of volatile elements. Less acid is typically used and less contamination from the working environment occurs. However, this method is, still has its limitations of completely dissolving some of the fractury elements and monocrystals such as zircon or chromite. Alkali fusion is another commonly used digestion method. It is well known as an effective method for the decomposition of refractory minerals, such as oxide forms of silicon, aluminium, magnesium, calcium and zirconium. In the fusion process, the samples are mixed with an alkali flux, such as lithium metaborate, and are heated in a muffle furnace. The insoluble samples are converted into lithium compounds. Following this process, the mixture is then dissolved in acid and diluted for analysis. Now let's look at the advantages of alkali fusion. Fusion is a commonly used method for geological sample decom decomposition. The greatest advantage of the, this method is the ability to complete sample, for a complete sample digestion especially able to dissolve silicates and refractory minerals. However, the disadvantages of fusion method is resulting in a very high TDS solution and contaminations which can, which can negatively affect analysis. Other disadvantages are it's time consuming and the limitations in the application are they're not able to test for things that are in the fusion samples like boron, lithium and sodium. This method is also not suitable for volatile element determination. It is essential to choose the correct digestion technique to have good results. Prior to choosing the appropriate method, there are some factors that need to be considered, including sample type, elements of interest, concentration, how many samples you wish to run, and on what instrument you want to analyze them on. Are there any standard methods that you can follow for the digestion process? The important it is important to select the digestion method for ease of operation, reproducibility, and as little impact to the environment as possible. 
Standard methods are av available from a variety of different organizations from around the world. Here we list a few of the methods commonly used in the geochemistry industry. These include methods from the, in the IOS, International Organization for Standards, EN, which is the European Standards, ASTM, which is American Society for Testing and Materials, EPA, which is the Environmental Protection Agency, and GB, which is China National Standard. On this slide, we list the digestion methods and a summary and comparison between them. For the majority of ores and geological samples, digestion with sample preparation block and microwave system had the strongest advantages like less contamination, small acid use, good reaction control, less preparation time, and can meet a, a high sample throughput. Perkinelma provides a portfolio for sample preparation. We have a sample preparation block or hot block and a Titan microwave digestion system. The sample preparation block system is used for open digestion. It is an upgrade from a hot plate. The advantages of the sample preparation block is it's simple to use, has a high throughput, and provides uniform temperature for reliable and reproducible operation. It reduces the contamination errors from acids and vessels. It's ideal digestion extraction method for geological samples. The Titan microwave digestion system is used for closed vessel digestion at high pressure. It's able to di digest difficult sample types. The advantages of the microwave system is there's no loss of volatile analysis, analytes, and less contamination caused from the working environment. It is ideal for difficult sample types like geological samples and metal-based ores. The sample preparation block system offers an acid-resistant graphite block and comes in a variety of different configurations. It operates with either the sample preparation block digital controller or the sample preparation block touch controller. The controller is set up so that the heating temperature, which can be accurate to 0.1 degrees. It has also features displaying the actual sample temperature, setting up and shutting down times. The Titan microwave system is a top loading microwave. It is simple to load and unload samples with the direct temperature and pressure control technologies that can accurately monitor the sample temperature in each vessel, providing consistent digestion results. The turntable has two configurations, 8 and 16 positions. The system also contains pre-installed methods to, to make the digestion process easy and deliver high performance results. To aid with the difficulties of digestion samples, our closed vessel Titan microwave system comes with an expansive sample digestion guide to help with the process of choosing acids, temperatures and pressures required to digest a range of substances from environmental samples, pharmaceuticals, personal health care products, food and beverages, and of course, industrial samples. The industrial section includes many sample preparation techniques for both pure metals, alloys, rocks and ores. Next, we're going to look at some applications. When talking about the results, it's good to think in terms of the following terms. Accuracy refers to the agreement between a measured value and a true value, whereas precision refer refers to the agreement between a test result. Systematic and random errors can refer to variations of results. These can include operator or instrument errors. For the first application, we're going to look at the analysis of a geochemical sample measuring for 21 elements. For this example, we used a four acid digestion method on a hot plate. The geological certified reference material was OREAS 45E. In the procedure below, you can see how the samples were analyzed, were digested. So now let's have a look at the results. In this case, the samples were analysed on an AVIO 500 ICP OES. On the right hand side, you can see what the certified reference concentration should be. And in the graph at the bottom, you can see that for all 21 elements, the analytes were recovered for between 90 and 110%. 
For the second application, we're going to look at copper ore samples digested using aqua regia digestion in a sample preparation block. Here we used six copper ore samples from certified reference materials, and we had to determine the levels of silver, arsenic, copper and iron in them. The procedure for how these samples were digested can be seen in the procedure section at the bottom of this slide. Looking at the results, these were measured on an Avio 500 ICP OES. In the table at the bottom, you can see the results for silver, arsenic, copper and iron. I'd like you to note that silver and arsenic were measured at the PPM levels, whereas copper and iron are measured in the percent levels. Here you can see the difference between the measured value and the expected value is very similar across the board, with recoveries well within the 90 to 110 percent range for each of the six certified reference materials. The third application will be looking at major elements and impurities in ore samples. For this, we used a microwave digestion method. We used multiple acids of nitric acid, hydrogen chloride and hydrogen fluoride. At the bottom of the page, you can see the procedure that was used when digesting this. And at the bottom right hand in the table, you can see the target temperatures, the ramps in minutes and the hold times used in the microwave digestion process. Firstly, these samples were analysed using an ICP OES Avio 200. This was to look for the major elements of iron, copper, nickel and cobalt. Seven separate digestions were performed with two replicates in each digestion. On the graph on the bottom right hand side, you can see that the recoveries were within plus or minus 20% for all seven separate digestions and all replicates. This sample was also analysed using the Nexian 300 ICPMS. In the top right hand side, you can see a table of the expected concentrations for the certified reference material. As you can see, some of these are major elements and some of them are minor elements, and all were measured on the Nexian ICPMS simultaneously. The graph at the bottom on the right hand side shows that all of these the recoveries came in between plus or minus 20%, with most of them falling within the plus or minus 10% region. In the fourth application, we're going to look for major elemental analysis of ore samples. In this case, a lithium metaborate fusion digestion was used. This sample contains high levels of silicon oxide, aluminium oxide, magnesium oxide and ma manganese, which require the lithium metaborate fusion for full digestion. At the bottom, you can see the procedure that was used to, med to digest these samples. In this analysis, an, I, an ICP OES Avio 500 was used. As you can see on the graph on the right hand side, we had excellent recoveries for all main um, elements, silicon, al aluminium, calcium, magnesium and manganese over a 12 and a half hour fusion run. All recoveries were within plus or minus 3% of the true value. In the final application, we're looking at major elemental analysis in an iron chromium alloy using a sodium oxide fusion digestion. In the bottom, you can see the procedure used for the digestion process. For this, an ICP OES was used for the analysis. On the bottom table on the left hand side, you can see what the certified reference material concentrations were meant to be. And on the right hand side, you can see that we had recoveries within plus or minus 10% for all of the main elements, aluminium, calcium, chromium, iron, magnesium and silicon. In summary, all the digestion methods allow to get accurate and precise results. You just need to pick which digestion method you need to use for your particular elements you're looking for. Fusion, fusion digestion can provide total dissolution, but is time consuming and has a high risk of contamination. 
It also isn't suitable for volatile elements. Acid digestion is a common approach for sample preparation. Compared to microwave digestion, the acid digestion procedures with the sample preparation block are similar and save time. It is better than a hot plate in terms of high throughput, less cross-contamination, and also suitable for volatile ele elemental determination. Thank you for listening and we'll take any of your questions.